What is up, my boys? Yes, indeed, we are doing another rant, but not just one. We're breaking the rules and speed running the next few chapters. If you want an excuse, you can point to how False Idol hasn't updated for months, but if you want the truth, uh, this is because this video schedule for the next month is going to be special, but we only have enough time to upload two videos before we can dive into our September special. While we do have the recorded material to make a new com for the next comic that we'll be reading, it's four episodes, and I don't want to stop that series of videos just to release what we have for September. Also, looking at what we have planned for, we don't have enough material for the full month, so we need to supplement that with some stuff, while also having to deal with the lack of content for this current month. So, long story short, I decided that the best solution would be to crank something fast, easy for me, and fun for me. So, essentially, rapid fire rants. That's right, we are back on the rant train, boys, and it feels so good. So, coming off the heels of Witch Hunt, we start off on College Material, Chapter 106 of Bittersweet Candy Bowl. And if we're wondering, hey, where's Witch Hunt? Don't worry, it's coming. Anyway, College Material is the chapter where Augustus is going to take the SATs with Lucy, except it's not about that at all, and the comic doesn't even pretend to act like that's the focus of this chapter. As in second page, we start to see who the real focus of this chapter is. It's time! Daisy! That's right! This is a Daisy chapter! What is she going to do? What is the story in this one? Are we going to have light hijinks about her and Augustus, or develop her friendship with new Lucy? Good luck, everyone! Stay on the other side. Nope, they fuck off immediately in the next page. So, that was an odd intro. So, if this chapter with Lucy, Augustus, Daisy, and Jordan isn't going to have us follow Lucy, Augustus, or Jordan, what is this chapter about? Happy? Oh, hello. Oh, Abby. Oh, joy. It's what I've always wanted. A fucking Abby and Daisy chapter. Wonderful. Great even. You're bringing him back from the background. My joy is immeasurable. Looks like we're together. Ah! Let me show you where it is. Oh, yeah. That would be nice. Thank you so much. No one will be seated during the riveting, awkward drama of Abby and Daisy taking the SATs. Nor the one-page wordless reminder that Lucy and Augustus are also here. It appears, though, as if Teshi also didn't care about the test, as we just get a wordless montage out of that setup before we get back to the characters doing things. And it's not the worst thing in the world, and I know that wordless montages are useful. I even mentioned how the test itself was pointless, but the way it's glazed over here makes the whole setup seem frivolous. I, as a reader, should never have to ask, why does this series of events have to be centered around this one event? Because the real answer, from a writer's standpoint, is always because we need these characters together for this scene idea. And it's simple as is, but as a writer, you're kind of supposed to disguise that a bit more by making this central event or conflict interesting, expanding on that and making it have a point, but here it's like... The feelings of a man who knows that college is not in his future because the SATs don't fucking matter. And what was the point of getting these characters together? Oh my gosh, I thought the same thing. They really weren't lying about the practice tests being harder, huh? Or maybe we're just geniuses. <laughs> maybe. Oh, the study sessions really peed off. Oh, so that we could have these two geeking out and repairing their relationship. Awesome. Great. I love it. It's funny in retrospect, all those hours leading up to this moment. I'm glad I was able to spend them with you. Yay. Reminiscing about their relationship. That's wonderful and heartfelt if you forget how Abby sabotaged that relationship himself by not being honest about his feelings towards Paolo with Daisy, assaulted the dude, and then left Daisy himself because he couldn't get over her being friendly with Paolo. It's so sweet. I love it. When you were planning something special afterwards, right? Oh god, no! Take, take it back, go back to being pointless and stupid, just please stop reminding me about the fucking Contem chapter, please! I implore you! Working with someone like you has what really made it... 
Yes, yes, go to the obvious purpose. Turn to the real reason he forces into the setup that doesn't matter. Show us Augustus. Yes. As we rush through Daisy being okay with Augustus and Witch Hunt, we must now get Abby's feelings on this new development. How will he respond to seeing Daisy interact and be around someone who he believes to be an attempted rapist? Are they waiting for you? <laughs> um, it's just a, uh, Lucy and, um, uh, I have to go anyway. Passively, of course. I shouldn't keep them waiting. Abby, wait, I'm... Are you okay? It's not my business anyway. Oh, but look, look, he's taking Jasmine's advice. Maybe I'm being too harsh. Look, he's learning. He is learning to control his judgment and anger, and I'm sure that will carry over. I just know that he's not going to flip out again on someone else who has done far less than Augustus, even in Abby's eye. Look how controlled he is, and not taking pot shots, and not being confrontational and antagonizing. Good for him. Well, there goes my chance at the Ivies. There goes my chance at anything. Don't worry, everyone. You all did something really amazing today. You should take a break. Hey, how about Burgertron, guys? So your many shakes on me. But enough about that. We got more pointlessness. Although I will relent that it's not bad. And in fact, this is the exact thing I was talking about with making the setting of these talks matter. Obviously, this is just a way for us to get to Burgertron so we can get Palo in this chapter too to talk about stuff. But it doesn't feel like such a waste of time because we have dialogue to chew on and digest in what could have been just another wordless transition page. You sure you want to be sticking around? Huh? Oh, well, you know, that was a long time ago, and I know you're not as sneaky as you used to be, so I'm not scared. What do you mean by that? Remove the air of mystery and you're just a guy in a smelly coat. Well, I wash my clothes now. Although I will say it is pretty weird how Lucy is more concerned about Daisy hanging around Augustus than Abby who, you know, stopped him at the carnival. But whatever, whatever, it's whatever. So make a prediction, Daisy. 1599, 1600, place your bets. Well, I did struggle with that second to last question. Wow, a whole question. Wow, one question. Anyway, we get some nice character chemistry dialogue, which is actually nice. It's a breath of fresh air, and I'm not complaining, although I will complain about that Lucy smirk. At least it's filled in this time, and it's not a complete banana mouth. It's a nice break before we get to the main man of this segment. Well, guess I'll always be around to feed you guys. Hello, you're not even going to try next year? Come on, you wouldn't have to be a genius to guess what kind of number I'd get. I will say, though, I do appreciate this bit. Even if it's to send home the message of this part, it serves as a good showing of Palo's perspective as he doesn't feel confident in his academics and thus doesn't think or try to do the SATs, much to Daisy's dismay. So, so let me help you out. You can't tutor me forever, Daisy. You got cancers to cure, not hopeless cases like me. Was he meaning that, that Daisy's gonna be a doctor because she's so smart, or is he just saying he's more hopeless case than cancer? Or maybe because Daisy's hanging out with Lucy, she's curing that cancer. Oh my god. We're not all cut out for college. There's nothing wrong with that. I know. It just... You want him to do well. Anyway, I guess this tells Daisy the moral of this story. Hello, we've, you've really made a big difference since you showed up. You don't even know. Oh, uh, thanks. I'm not doing that much, really. <laughs> don't be modest. Whatever you say, boss, I'm the greatest. Get a bit of back and forth between Paolo and his co-worker. We get a peek into Paolo's future, being hopeful. And then we ended there. All in all, pointless, but not the worst. There 
could have been more time spent playing around with the scenario of Daisy and the gang taking the test. Abby's inclusion could be completely ripped out and it wouldn't change anything in terms of our other characters but the hope and idea of life outside of these characters plot lines is always welcome in my eyes on all five out of ten it's mediocre as we continue our rush into happy birthday happy birthday chapter 107 unwanted guest and if the last chapter seemed pointless and barren, well, prepare yourself for the birthday chapter. Another to join along with the tradition of pointless birthday chapters. Not to say that they aren't welcome. In fact, some of them hold a soft place in my heart as cheap, silly, fun chapters to break up the drama and lighten the mood. For instance, Lucy's birthday chapter, where Mike surprises Lucy with a gift. But how does this stack up? Well, all you really need to see to figure that out is the singing part. Happy birthday, happy, happy, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday to you. Hip, hip, hooray. It didn't even rhyme. You had one job and you absolutely failed. You couldn't put in the minimum required effort in a birthday song by at the very least trying to make it fucking rhyme. I subliminally was trying to make that rhyme. Jesus Christ. This chapter gets a 0 out of 10. You are pointless and not even in a fun way. It has been over a decade and we have never come close to the pinnacle of birthday chapters than with Mike's from volume 1. Happy, happy birthday, we're really glad you came. Happy, happy birthday from the Lobster Gang. Really are excited, we hope you are impressed. So happy, happy birthday to our favorite guest, yay! It has been downhill ever since. But anyway, let's bum rush this chapter, shall we? Or you get a page where the kids are all supporting Lucy and telling her how they all care, which makes her mopey. But then Mike shows up, and seeing him upset makes Lucy's bitchy, bitchy ass perk up in delight at the opportunity to snipe at him. Daisy overtakes Sue's role of being the overbearing protector of Lucy. Then Lucy makes a trick shot. She then reestablishes the new terms of her and Mike's relationship. You got a wordless montage of everyone supporting Lucy on her birthday in lieu of, oh, you know, any actual fun, witty dialogue with the characters to establish our, you know, have fun. Instead, we're focused on Mike, who is now a lonely loser because he alienated himself from the friend group. And woo hoo hoo. But oh, whoa, it's at least Sandy is calling him more now. Do we get to see them having a conversation? Maybe talking about each other's going on, goings on? Hello? Oh, Sandy, it's... Oh, Sandy, it's so good to hear from you. Will the fates finally smile upon Dave Steve? <laughs> what, are you new here? Of course not. Message of the story is Mike's alone, Lucy's surrounded by friends. Boo hoo hoo. Hot dismissed! Bring in the dancing lobsters! Hey, dude, I hate everything you do, but I'm trying really hard to not hate you. Hating you won't make you suck any less. Zero out of ten, like crab from a two dollar all you can eat buffet, it lacks any meat. So I know this is a different format to the usual one-at-a-time ranting, giving each chapter their own attention and care to dissect all that's in the chapter with a fine-tooth comb. But really, these chapters don't really deserve that kind of treatment to be made into a video. College material has the most substance, but really it's just hints at the future, which we've seen time and time again to be as reliable as marbles on a staircase. We could have had an interesting dialogue of Abby being one of the people who should be the most upset about Daisy hanging around Augustus, but he gets cut off at the pass and we move on like it wasn't anything. Just another thing to bring up later, I guess. And even the birthday chapter, which should be pointless fun, decides to instead weigh everything down because instead of focusing on Lucy, interacting with everyone and seeing how much love everyone has for her, we focus on Mike being all sad and lonely. Oh no, you know, like how he was at the end of Witch Hunt, which was only two chapters ago. Nonetheless, join us next time as we dive into the next chapter, Time Out, and oh boy, that one, that one's getting my full attention.